When it comes to the infinite expanse of space, I personally choose not to question a lot of it. Space is terrifying and there is so much in space that could destroy our entire planet and we could do absolutely nothing about it. So today on Most Amazing Top 10, I'm Adam Andrews and we're talking about the top 10 space mysteries we should just never try to solve. There's a lot here I don't really understand or that I may gloss over or even get wrong. So I invite you to discuss everything in this video down below. But coming in at number 10, what came before the Big Bang. So the Big Bang was what started the universe billions of billions of Earth years ago. But like, what came before that? We honestly don't really know, and our smartest minds theorize the answer is extremely simple. Stephen Hawking noted that the answer could literally be nothing. We have no observable evidence of what came before everything. I come from the Top 10 Nerd channel, and this question has been answered in different ways in comic books. In Marvel, they say that we are in a version of the cosmos, meaning there was a previous version that ended up getting destroyed and remade. But if that's the case, what's doing the destroying and the remaking? If nothing came before, then what the heck caused the Big Bang in the first place? If there was something before, what would that do to the way we think about the universe? And if something is responsible for it all, I don't know if our tiny little human brains could actually handle that. Number nine, gravity paradox. This question is a pretty simple one, but yet it's got a lot of scientists kind of completely stumped. Why can a refrigerator magnet defy an entire planet's gravitational pull? It's basically asking why gravity can be such a strong force in the universe, but also be such a weak one in other instances. Some scientists believe that gravity may well be as strong as other forces, like electromagnetism and the force that holds the nucleus together, but they think that gravity's influence is dissipated because it leaks into extra dimensions. That's just a theory though because we actually have no idea. That one little question about refrigerator magnets has kind of brought the whole idea of gravity into question. If it is being dissipated into extra dimensions, that opens up way more questions than it actually answers. Obviously, I'm not smart enough to answer this question. I am, after all, just a YouTube host, not a scientist, but I would just think it's all subjective, right? Like, a planet is so huge that the things that are on the planet would have to follow different gravitational rules, right? And like a magnet is still being affected by the Earth's gravity is just so small in comparison that it can do its own thing? I'm literally talking out my butt right now. I, I honestly don't know what I'm talking about. We should just move on before I make myself sound more dumb than I already am. Number eight, how big is the universe? I don't know if you guys have seen that clip from Pete Holmes' stand-up routine, but he, he talks about how none of any of this makes any sense. The universe is constantly expanding and infinitely. Infinity is getting bigger. And like Pete says, that makes no freaking sense. If the universe is constantly expanding and we know it's constantly expanding, then when posed with the question of how big the universe is, someone would be able to give you an answer. But we don't actually have a number for that because we literally don't know the shape of the universe and we don't know the actual rate at which the universe is expanding. We just know that it is. To me, this question almost doesn't matter for most of us because even if we were to try to go to the edge of the universe, no one here can live long enough to make that journey. It takes roughly 9 to 12 years to get to Pluto, and that's just the furthest planet, yes I'm calling it a planet, in our solar system, which itself is just an extremely tiny speck in our Milky Way galaxy, which is also just a tiny speck in the vastness of the universe. It's all too big. Is what I'm basically saying here. Number seven, expansion. The last point does lead me nicely to into this next point though, which is the fact that while we know the universe is constantly expanding, we can't actually put a pin on the rate at which it is actually expanding. For the past six years, the Hubble Space Telescope has been calculating the speed at which the universe is expanding, and recently came up with what is accepted as the most precise measurement to date, except that the rate stands in direct conflict with independent measurements of the early universe's expansion. That's unsettling for astrophysicists because it means we know even less about our universe and its ways than we thought we did. But if we do learn this one, would that be a good thing? Or would it just help us all feel more and more meaningless and tiny? Of course, these are scientific questions, so our emotions about these things aren't really important, but I'm just saying, I already feel small and insignificant. Number six, the multiverse. If you have been keeping up with the MCU, then you are at least familiar with the idea of a multiverse. 
Essentially, it means that if you go far enough into the universe, things would have to start repeating because there's only a finite number of ways that particles can be arranged in space and time. According to theories, the universe is flat and infinite, so those particles would have to repeat, creating another universe with another Earth and, yes, another you. And because it's all infinite, there would be infinite versions of you who could be doing the exact same things as you right now, or maybe they wore different clothes today or had a completely different job or honestly they're an infinite number of variables here. The thing is we will most likely never know if this theory is true or not and even if we did that means there would be an evil alternate you or maybe or maybe you are the evil alternate one. I don't know. I don't know about that one, man. I don't like that. Number five, what the heck is dark matter? Dark matter gives out no light, or at least too little light for us to detect. We know it exists because we see the effect of its gravity on the stars and the galaxies, like the Milky Way, which could not have dragged in enough matter to make its own stars in the 13.82 billion years since the Big Bang without there being a lot of invisible matter whose extra gravity helped speed things along. I hope that wasn't too confusing. The European Space Agency Planck satellite found that dark matter accounts for 26.8% of the mass energy of the universe compared with the 4.5% of normal atomic matter. This basically means that dark matter outweighs the visible stars and galaxies that we can actually see by a factor of about six. And yet, no Earth-based experiment has found any evidence of dark matter at all. And we have been looking for a long time. It's totally possible that our theory of matter, or more likely our theory of gravity, needs to be reworked and fiddled with. It's also possible that maybe the universe is filled with dark stars and dark planets and dark life. What does that even mean? I don't know. Do you know? Because I don't. Number four, what is time and does it even exist? So when we talk about time, we imagine it flowing like a river, like a time stream. But for something to flow, by definition, it has to flow with respect to something else, like how a river flows with respect to a river bank. So does time flow with respect to something else? Another kind of time, maybe, I, I don't know. The idea seems kind of stupid and kind of just made up, but most likely the flow of time is an illusion that we created on our own with our brains to organize the information constantly flooding in through our senses. We also have a strong sense of a shared past, present, and future. However, the idea of a common present, meaning the time right now that everyone's in, doesn't actually exist in our understanding of relativity. Precisely how someone else's time is sliced up depends on how fast they are moving relative to you or the strength of the gravity they are experiencing. These effects are only really noticeable with things like the speed of light and super massive gravity, which is why they are not super obvious to us in everyday life. But it basically means the idea that one person's interval of time is not the same as another person's. And that one person's interval of time is not the same as another's. If you watch Interstellar, there's a pretty basic explanation of this as different members of the crew age differently as they split up to different places around a massive black hole and other planets whose gravities affect all the characters differently time-wise. It's just, my brain hurts actually a lot right now. Number three, do we have everything wrong? Isaac Newton's theory of gravity was accurate enough to fly spacecraft to the moon, but it began breaking down when extremely high speeds and very strong gravitational fields became known to us. Then Einstein's theory of general relativity came in and was a better alternative. It correctly describes the bending of starlight by gravity, the orbital decay of binary pulsars, and the warping of space-time around a black hole. Really cool stuff like that. General relativity is currently physicists' best theory of gravity, but it doesn't answer everything, obviously, which is why history will probably repeat itself and physicists might discover small effects that would hint at an even better theory of gravity. Einstein's theory has passed most of the things that might test it with flying colors, but physicists will keep putting their theories on the rack. One day it may even fail, not being completely wrong, but just one small part to a bigger puzzle that none of us will be alive to learn the answer to. Number two, Earth Martians. Oh boy, this one's a doozy. Okay, so look, we take it for granted that life on Earth actually began here. We just kind of assume that that's the way things worked. But that's not 
actually necessarily accurate. Apparently, scientists are actually finding evidence that life on Earth may have instead come from Mars and was brought to this planet by like a meteorite at some point in Earth's incredibly long history. The trouble is that scientists themselves can't even agree on which area of science will provide the answer to this conundrum, and let alone whether science is even where we should look to answer it, which, like Pete said about the universe's expansion, that makes no frickin' sense. What do you mean? What do you mean we can't, what? <laughs> Number one, aliens. Since the early 1960s, scientists have theorized that it's extremely likely that intelligent life exists outside of Earth, and I for one, totally agree. The math kind of has to mean it's true. The universe is ever expanding, infinite, and contains countless other galaxies just like ours, with planets that would be in the similar position as ours is to their sun, and with the right conditions for life to actually thrive and grow, like the planet Kepler-186f, which you should look up if you haven't before, it's kinda cool. The trouble is that we have basically zero scientific evidence to prove that the life could potentially exist, or does in fact exist. In fact, we have no hard scientific evidence that any life exists outside of Earth. Although with that planet, we actually just can't see that far down onto like the surface of the planet to see what's going on. So it could be there, we just can't see it. Although we are finding some fun stuff on Mars that may say otherwise. The time may be drawing closer and closer to when science confirms that there is life elsewhere in our solar system or the galaxy, or at least somewhere in the universe. And I really hope I'm alive for that. The thing that gets me though is, if whatever is out there is advanced enough to see us too, and if it is advanced enough to see us, then is it advanced enough to make it here? And if that's the case, then um, we are not as advanced as that, and we should stand no chance in defending ourselves against something like that, assuming they would want to hurt us, which as humans, we would just assume they would, and if they didn't, I think our stupid human brains wouldn't be able to handle the fear of not knowing, and we'd do something dumb like attack them, and then we'd be gone because we just can't stand up to that kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? That's all the time I've got. I need a nap or to just sit down because that was a lot. So I'll catch you on the flippy flop and stay safe out there and um, don't think about space too much. Mm -hmm.